Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we're diving into the world of business growth and efficiency with Clockwork by Mike Michalowicz. This 2018 bestseller is a veritable handbook for entrepreneurs looking to scale their businesses without sacrificing their sanity or indeed their personal life. By implementing strategic systems and standard operating procedures, businesses can function efficiently, enabling entrepreneurs to focus on seizing new opportunities and addressing challenges effectively. Author Mike Michalowicz is no stranger to entrepreneurship. Having grown two multi-million dollar companies from scratch by the age of 35, he's since ventured into the realms of authorship, angel investing, and motivational speaking. His rich experience in small business strategy shines through in his other titles like Fix This Next and The Pumpkin Plan. Clockwork is an absolute must-read for anyone nursing the dream of starting a small business. For solo entrepreneurs ready to smartly scale up or even established business owners who can't recall when last they had a vacation, this book will offer invaluable insights on how to allow your business to run seamlessly and independently. Clockwork. Design your business to run itself. Introduction. Discover how to transform your small business woes into wins. Have you ever dreamed of starting your own small business, only to find that instead of the flexible hours, pride in your work, and financial freedom you envisioned, you're shackled to around-the-clock work, too many responsibilities to delegate, and financial instability? If that's you, take heart. It's not time to throw in the towel and return to the nine-to-five grind just yet. Your small business can be successful, and more importantly, it can achieve this success without draining your life energy. The key lies in creating a system where your business thrives independently of you. This enables you to take a step back to strategize, seize fresh opportunities, and create a balance between work and life. As we delve into this concept, you'll discover the fascinating connection between a bee colony and a small business, the fundamental four dimensions of labor and how they influence your company, and strategies on finding your unique market spot to boost your profits. Part one, stay clear of the misleading allure of productivity. Let me ask you this, are you the linchpin of your business? If the answer is a definite yes, you might have a situation on your hands. Here's why. For your business to genuinely prosper, it should be capable of flourishing without you at its helm. If you're the linchpin holding it all together, chances are you're ensnared in a constant cycle of work, stress, and incessant digital attachment. You might assume that the antidote to this is productivity, doing more in less time. But this, my friend, is a fallacy. The central idea here is to steer clear of the productivity trap. Consider Parkinson's law. It suggests that our usage of a resource expands to match its availability. Allocate limitless time for work and you'll consume it. Sure, you can enhance efficiency through productivity, but what becomes of the time you free up through these productivity gains? Exactly. You pile on more work, falling headfirst into the productivity trap. Your true goal shouldn't be to simply increase productivity but to achieve organizational efficiency. This means aligning your resources harmoniously for optimum returns, utilizing your team's talents to their fullest potential, and focusing on executing key tasks instead of hurriedly crossing out random tasks on your to-do list. In essence, strive for targeted efficiency rather than blanket productivity. However, there might be a substantial obstacle to achieving this, you. We're all creatures of habit, finding comfort in familiarity. Even if the ceaseless cycle of productivity is exhausting, its familiarity makes you feel like you're giving your all. These relentless work habits can cause you to develop tunnel vision. If you're always on the go, you might be stuck in a reactive mode, dealing with pressing issues instead of focusing on strategic, impactful actions that align with your long-term goals. Before you know it, Your days are consumed by firefighting tasks, but none of these rushed decisions are guiding your business towards its North Star. 
Working nonstop might seem like a testament to your dedication to your business, but in reality, it's an invisible chain holding you back. So the real answer here isn't to work more, but to work smarter, and sometimes less. The key is in establishing the right systems that will allow you to do so. The subsequent sections will show you how to achieve this. Part two, shift from doing the work to orchestrating it. The world we inhabit operates in three dimensions, but in the realm of business, a fourth dimension exists. Let's explore this concept through the lens of the four Ds of work, doing, deciding, delegating, and designing. In the early days of your business, it's likely you were in the doing phase, juggling multiple roles and responsibilities. However, to catalyze growth and scale your business, it's crucial to transition from doing to designing. The central theme here is, don't just do the work, orchestrate it. When you're knee-deep in doing, the opportunity to design often eludes you. Entering the designing phase means devising innovative ideas and processes that enable your business to evolve. It's about brainstorming workflows and future plans, not merely handling paperwork and schedule management. The value derived from the designing phase far outweighs the outcomes of the doing phase. Picture yourself as a coach and your employees as your team. They're the players on the field, while you're responsible for crafting the winning strategy. But to effectively do this, you need to move from the field to the coach's box. Now, how can you transition into this role? This is where the other three Ds come in handy. When you expand your team, you begin deciding in addition to doing. You decide which tasks to delegate and evaluate the quality of their execution. However, deciding can be as time-consuming as doing. Spending too much time deciding could rob you of the time needed for designing, potentially leading to a standstill in business innovation. Therefore, it's crucial to ascend to the delegating phase. Instead of assigning individual tasks, delegate the entire decision-making process for a specific task. Although this might lead your employees to approach the task differently or even make mistakes, surrendering control ultimately benefits your business. Why is this the case? Because delegating is the ticket that gets you off the field and into the coach's box where you can focus on designing. However, while designing should be your primary focus, the other three Ds still hold importance. A healthy business should aim to distribute its time and resources as follows. 80% on doing, 2% on deciding, 8% on delegating, and 10% on designing. Overdoing the designing phase could lead to a strategy-heavy but execution-light situation. Conversely, spending 95% of your time doing means you're not focusing enough on refining and optimizing the process itself. Part 3. Discover and safeguard your linchpin role. Within every beehive, there's a critical role, the queen bee. Her primary job is to lay eggs, a role so vital to the survival of the colony that all other bees prioritize her needs. They cater to her needs first, ensuring she is well-fed and cared for before moving on to other tasks such as pollen collection. Now, you may be wondering how this ties back to your business, and the connection is quite profound. Here's the key insight. Discover and safeguard your linchpin role. So, what's your business's linchpin role? Think about the one pivotal task that propels your company forward. Yes, numerous tasks are important. You won't get paid without invoicing, for example. But what's the absolute essential, the task without which your business simply can't survive? For a PR firm, it might be maintaining effective client communication. For an ad agency, it could be outperforming competitors in direct marketing. The person performing this essential task holds the linchpin role. It could be the business owner or someone else altogether, the creative director, the lead salesperson, or even a team of people. The focus should be on the role, not the person occupying it. After identifying the linchpin role, your next task is clear. All employees must strive to enable the queen bee to perform her role effectively. Only after this responsibility is adequately addressed should they focus on their primary tasks. 
consider a restaurant known for serving top-notch cuisine. The linchpin role here is serving exceptional food, and your chefs are the ones fulfilling that role. Every team member has their own duties to perform, but supporting the linchpin role should always come first. For instance, on a busy night, if your servers have tables to clean and hot meals ready to be served simultaneously, which task should take precedence? The answer is straightforward. Serving the hot meals is the priority, as it aligns with your restaurant's linchpin role. Clean tables, while important, don't directly tie to the linchpin role. Similarly, ensure that those occupying the linchpin role are not sidetracked from their key responsibilities. If, for example, a dishwasher malfunctions, don't pull your chefs away from their core duty to wash dishes. Find an alternative solution. Remember, every role in your business holds significance. However, the overall success of your enterprise hinges on how well the linchpin role is fulfilled. Make it your top priority. Part 4. Optimize your business with standard operating procedures. How do you peel a banana? Do you start at the stem? Surprisingly, that's not the most efficient method. Peeling a banana from the stem often bruises the fruit, resulting in a mushy mess. Monkeys, in contrast, hold the stem and apply pressure at the other end, making the peel slide off smoothly. In the world of small businesses, knowing the optimal way to perform tasks is like knowing the monkey's trick. Your staff might not be aware of the most efficient way to do their tasks, but you can help them, because you've honed these processes over time. So here's our key insight. Standard operating procedures enable everyone to maximize their potential. Have you ever found yourself thinking, if I want things done right, I have to do them myself? If so, it's likely because you haven't effectively communicated your standard operating procedures, or SOPs. Each significant task your team performs should be systematized and documented in a manner that's easy for everyone to access and understand. How does one establish SOPs? It begins with identifying your key tasks using the ACDC model. Every operation your business undertakes falls into one of these categories, attract, convert, deliver, collect. Activities like marketing assist in attracting potential customers. Tasks like scheduling meetings aid in converting these prospects into clients. Operations such as shipping or reporting allow you to deliver on your promises, while accounting and invoicing enable you to collect payments from clients. To devise your SOPs, list all the tasks your business undertakes in each of these four categories. You'll then have a broad picture of what needs to be systematized. Next, decide how you'd like to document these processes through written guidelines or video tutorials, for example. Once you've established your SOPs, it's time to delegate. Be ready to field a lot of questions and adjust your procedures as needed. If your team encounters hurdles, your SOPs may need tweaking or even a complete overhaul. However, once your SOPs have been refined and are properly implemented, your operations will run smoothly and uniformly. A win-win for everyone. Part 5. Gearing up your business to generate income even in your absence. Imagine you are given a choice to make $50 per hour or $1.5 per hour. Your initial instinct would be to opt for the $1.50, correct? However, if you think about it from a solopreneur perspective, employing someone to help you grow could imply taking a cut from your earnings, potentially bringing you down from $1.50 to $1.05 per hour. This daunting prospect can make many choose to continue working alone. But here's a crucial insight. If the addition of one employee earns you $5 per hour, then two employees could bring in $10 per hour. And with a team of 100, you could potentially make $500 per hour. This leads us to the key takeaway. Your business has the potential to generate revenue even in your absence. Growing your team doesn't just enhance your revenue prospects for the long term. It also liberates you for design work and helps shape your enterprise into a self-sustaining clockwork mechanism. If done right, recruiting new hires can reap significant benefits. The secret is not just hiring the right individual, but hiring the right person with the right skills for the right role. Here are a few guidelines to make smart hiring decisions. Firstly, 
don't hire based solely on skills. Often, employers focus on finding a candidate whose skill set perfectly matches the job description. But remember, while skills can be learned, passion, enthusiasm, and team spirit cannot. Secondly, offer candidates what they are truly looking for. It's not always about the salary. Some employees may value flexibility, creative freedom, or opportunities for professional development. If you can tailor their roles to what they truly value, you'll likely retain them longer and they'll perform at their best. Lastly, strive for diversity. Hiring people from different backgrounds and with varied life experiences can bring fresh perspectives to your team. Don't let your personal likings or dislikings cloud your judgment while recruiting. Hiring someone you don't instantly click with could actually be an excellent way to bring new, challenging perspectives to your team. Part 6. Discover your niche market and harness your potential therein. Imagine sunlight streaming through a magnifying glass, sharpening into a concentrated beam strong enough to singe a piece of paper. That's the kind of targeted intensity you need when marketing your products or services. Your goal is not to be a gentle ray of sun, but a laser-focused beam, honing in on a very defined target market. Who is your ideal customer? It's tempting to claim everyone. After all, a broader market promises more success, doesn't it? Not quite. By stretching yourself too thin or offering too much variety, you might fall short of delivering your best. The real key to success is discovering your niche and outshining your competitors by serving that niche with unwavering dedication. The essential takeaway is this. Discover your niche market and concentrate your energy there. To identify your niche, start by examining your current client base. Your top customers are not just the ones who spend the most on your products or services, but also the ones who value your offerings the most. Their purchases are concrete evidence of their appreciation. Yet, the evaluation doesn't stop here. Beyond revenues, consider your experience of working with these clients. Do they inspire and invigorate you, or do they deplete your energy and enthusiasm? Maintaining long-term relationships with clients who drain you can be detrimental to your overall productivity and motivation. With this evaluation, you should have a list of clients who not only generate significant revenues, but also inspire you to do your best work. What commonalities do these clients share? They might all belong to the same industry, or they could be a diverse group with a shared characteristic, like being small business owners from southern Texas. Even if their businesses differ significantly, they are all part of a community. Finally, pinpoint where this community congregates. Where do they network, discuss their needs, and share community updates? Which social media groups, community organizations, or conferences do they frequent? With this targeted profile of your ideal customer, you can now focus on serving this community with laser-like precision. Part 7. Navigating business with the compass of metrics. So, you've successfully transitioned from doing to designing in your business journey. That's fantastic. But now, new challenges emerge. How do you monitor and manage your business? How can you gauge success, assess performance, and uncover areas of improvement? The answer lies in one powerful tool, metrics. While the term metrics might incite visions of complexity or boredom, establishing these quantifiable measures of progress can be surprisingly straightforward and immensely beneficial. The pivotal insight is this. Metrics are your compass in business navigation. Recall the ACDC of your business. Attract, convert, deliver, and collect. These are the four integral business functions. Let's explore how metrics can be utilized across these areas. Firstly, you need to attract clients. To gauge your success in attracting customers, keep tabs on your website traffic. Or for a more precise measure, monitor the number of visitors who request a quote. Although this metric won't capture every potential client, it provides a valuable snapshot. If quote requests dwindle, investigate why. Is it seasonal? Did your pricing change? Similarly, if requests soar, 
identify what's working, and ensure it is replicated. Next, you must convert these leads into paying clients. You could track conversions within a set time frame, such as three months, to measure how many potential customers become actual clients. Now, let's talk delivery. Some businesses can easily measure products delivered, but a more insightful metric is tracking repeat customers. A high rate of returning customers is a surefire sign that you're not only delivering, but delivering excellently. However, if this metric drops, you must promptly diagnose the issue. Finally, we come to collection. The most straightforward metric here is the revenue your business generates. For a more granular view of your cash flow, scrutinize who pays, when they pay, and the incidence of late or non-payments. Customize your metrics to fit your business. By devising measurable indices for each of the four core functions, you'll always have an accurate picture of your business's performance. Part 8. Expect a few hurdles as your business starts running like clockwork. You've embarked on your business journey, transitioning from the doing to designing. You've identified your queen bee role, established SOPs, made strategic hires, discovered your niche market, and implemented meaningful metrics. You're steering your business towards functioning like a well-oiled machine. But beware, the journey ahead may not be entirely smooth. Here's a pivotal insight. Prepare yourself for potential resistance as your business evolves into a clockwork entity. Once your business is functioning like clockwork, your workload lightens, responsibilities are shared, and you find yourself more in the design phase than in the doing phase. This is undoubtedly excellent news for you and your business. However, initially, not everyone may welcome this change. Firstly, anticipate pushback from various stakeholders, your partners, team members, and even clients. Your shift into a designing role may make your work less visible and, in some cases, it may not seem like work at all. An hour spent brainstorming business strategies in a cafe could potentially yield greater profits than a month of regular 9 to 5 work, but the results may not be immediately visible. To mitigate resistance, make sure to communicate your plans transparently to all stakeholders before transitioning your business into a clockwork model. Explain the rationale and the benefits of this new approach and open up channels for feedback. Be willing to adapt your role and the new system based on the responses and suggestions you receive. Secondly, expect some self-induced resistance. As an entrepreneur who has built a business from scratch, you may find it hard to accept that the business can function independently of you. Such a realization might induce anxiety rather than relief. However, resist the temptation to fall back into the productivity trap. Remember, your role remains vital to the success of your business, only it's been reframed. Now, relish the freedom this new model offers. Enjoy the opportunity to focus on strategic aspects of the business, take it to new heights, and perhaps even take that long overdue vacation. Final summary. You're the visionary who brought your business idea to life. But to prevent your venture from stagnating, or worse, imploding, you must learn to share the reins. Establishing efficient systems and processes that allow your business to function independently will free you from the daily grind. This newfound freedom will enable you to invest your energy in strategizing, planning, and supervising, the vital elements that truly fuel business success. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.